I'm, I'm sorry. I think you're still muted. All right, okay. We'll start again. Assalamualaikum. Selamat petang and selamat siang to all. Welcome to Teens Idea 2021. You're sorry for a little glitch just now. And uh, today we're going to proceed with the meeting tree, the improved idea pitching, interaction, and also the voting session. My name is Tengku Nuraiti Tengku Izahar, the senior lecturer at Faculty of Civil Engineering Technology, University of Malaysia, Perlis. I will be serving as your moderator today. Before we start, all presenters and participants need to use the background prepared by the program committee. And the background file is shared by the committee in the chat box. Please change it now. Thank you. I will explain briefly the guidelines for today's program in order to be considerate and respectful to everyone attending and presenting today, all attendees are muted. We will have designated time to address questions, but you may submit your questions at any time during the session. To submit a question, please enter your question in the chat box. Please rename your ID with your full name, followed by the abbreviation of the university's name. For example, Adam underscore Unimap, or like myself, Tengkunoraiti underscore Unimap. Okay, and all the audience should ensure the availability of the microphone and also the webcam throughout the program. The attendance link will be given at the end of the program and you will receive certificate of appreciation for the full attendance and also certificate of participation for the eligible audience after the meeting seven, grand closing and award giving ceremony. We will start the program with the first group pitching session and followed by the Q&A session. 10 minutes for pitching and 20 minutes for the Q&A session. Reminder to all presenter, you will be reminded at minute seven, and please follow the time allocated to you. The pitching session will then continue with group two and group three with the same manner. And later in the afternoon, the committee will explain the mark distributions and announce the start of the voting session. However, the marks or the winner will not be announced today. It will only be announced in meeting seven, the grand closing and award giving ceremony. After a short break, there will be a short briefing on session two by Dr. Astria Nurufansha, followed by closing remarks by the Director of Center for International Engagement in MAP, the group photo session, and the program will end after that at 6.30 if you are in Malaysia and 5.30 p.m. in Indonesia. Without further ado, let's start the meeting tree with group one. We have Alif Puma, Jordan Young, Monjuara and Kalish El Dina. You may make your pitch now. I pass or I give the floor to you guys. Okay, let's go. Uh, good morning. Hello to everybody. Uh, my name is Jordan Yo, and I'm group one. And I'd Hello, like Jordan. to give it to my roommate, Mr. Aldena, to do yeah. your yeah, Jordan, maybe could you uh, postpone the, the presentation?
Okay, for you, uh, can you hear my voice? How do you uh, full screen your presentation? Because uh, here I see the notes. Okay. Okay, thank you, Jordan. And welcome, everyone. Hello, everybody. We are group one, Sleepy Head. I hope that everyone is doing fine and having a good, having good day. So far today, we will present it. We will be presenting our solution for the problem segment we have selected, which is what solution could you suggest in a bridge in bridge the gap between urban development and cultural heritage protection? Okay. In in here it seems a lot it seems a complicated now, isn't it? Right? Well, let us first explain this problem, which could easy to understand of it. Because uh, we are taking a trip around the world for this, so we will talk about the problem segment of course, and then we will talk about what is gap, what is the gap between it, culture and urban development, and then we call talk about the culture and the solution in summary. Thank you, Dina. Now, by looking at this statement, the gap between cultural heritage protection and urban development. What does it mean? Does anyone have a clue? It might be easier to understand if we take a look at some examples. Next. <clears throat> Let's play a game. Could anyone guess where these two places are? Now, would anyone to like guess? Let us know your answer below in the comments. With massive buildings and architectures, they all look, like, look kind of similar, don't they? Well, time us. The picture on the left is New York City from the United States, and the one on the right is Shenzhen from China. See how they all look the same. Culture is something unique, something distinctive, something different. Like a few countries ago, most civilizations look very different. They speak differently, they dress differently, they eat differently too. Let's move on to my next topic, culture. What is culture? Culture are not just building or in infrastructure. They are both tangible and intangible objects, such as music, art, and mannerism. However, due to the rapid socioeconomic development, especially in the information era, which is the, which is the one we are in right now, most of the cultural distinct dist has headed out for more social and economic purposes. So how do you protect them? Or how do we bridge the gap? I would like to invite my group to explain the solution to everyone. Okay, thank you so much for Ara for the collection. So the solution word uh one we want to bring it's between the uh to break uh break the gap between open development and culture heritage is uh protection is education. Well just common sense, right? Because like yes, first way we have to educate. Most of us know it's vital to know about culture, but there is no action. Second to fix this problem, well this is where the misconception is. There are actual action being done to bridge the gap, and now we are here just to show everybody the solution. What have to be solution in our group for this problem? So, the solution is uh, okay. The solution is like CCI or cultural and creativity industry. What so what should we done? Uh, is the investment uh, into CCI. So what is CCI? Yes, as I mentioned before, culture and creative industry. And how we do that? First, we uh, some uh, cultural creative industry is right. Cultural or creative entertainment and cultural or creative even and activity and local historical building in use. So we must uh, 
have three of them are almost uh, in cultural heritage itself. We have cultural and also creative. Okay, next. Sure, I'll take it from here. Thank you, Tina. So, like, this is Barcelona, looks for me, and it's a little bit different from, you know, everything that we see <laughs> down. Well, this is what we call that uh, CCI development. So, for example, you see stuff which are all money are poured into preserving the culture and building around the culture around this. This isn't old like centuries old these are kind of recent which is which has been built like developed like just 19th century just less than 100 years ago this is a new development but however it shows the distinctiveness and the uniqueness of spanish culture again let's look at another example The made of it bring out to the world and people are investing into this kind of thing where they are showing shows like this. Oh, it's a Japanese heritage. So moving on, we have something else, like from Mexico, something called as Los Muertos, which is the day of the dead. So this is an in Mexico, where people gather around and they gain money and they rest out the whole people and celebrate, spend the money and celebrate, and then use me group one. Proud of tradition. Three minutes left. Okay. That's how do we bridge the gap between? Okay, sure. So, <clears throat> so like this is something you about. What is the gap? Or the gap between social and public pitch is this. Whole of its people. So if we give the power to the people, addition, investment, we will shine show our to the whole world. And this gap in between urban development and cultural heritage protection by advancing together as one. Thank you very much. We have group one. Thank you so much. So that's all our presentation about the fish and culture itself. So yeah, so thank you so much. If you have any question, you can ask me. We back to uh, the MC. Thank you, good one. Very, very interesting presentation. You bring us to Barcelona, to Japan, and even to Mexico. I hope everybody enjoyed the amazing pitching. Next, we will proceed with the Q&A session. But also see, okay, a few of our reviewers, our beloved reviewers are also with us today. I see Dr. Haki, I see Dr. Shuhaida, and I see Dr. Norliza is also with us today. So I hope to have a very good Q&A session. And maybe we can start with a uh, first question from the reviewer first, I think. Who's the first reviewer, Dr. Tunko?
Or maybe we can start with student first, Dr. Shahida. Sorry. Okay. Okay, any questions from uh, group, group one? This is, uh, group this two is. Three? Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, this is continuation from, uh, I, I suppose this is a, a better version of your pitching uh, presentation, right? I suppose. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So, but still, I couldn't see. Um, I mean, what are you selling is not very clear. Um, you are talking about education, but the education is very, very general, very big. It's nothing specific about education to bridge it, uh, in order for you to bridge the gap between um, cultural heritage and development. It's not uh, stated clearly in your pitching, which is, uh, I don't see it. Uh, I do not know. I could, you could blame on the connectivity, which is uh, quite a pain just now, because uh, one moment I can hear you, another moment you lost some or it's just me, I do not know. But uh, what I'd like to uh, highlight here is it's not very clear what are you pitching about. You should uh, you try to uh, to sell here, to pitch to us. It's not very clear. And then um, uh, my, my, my internet is not stable. So, uh, and then one more thing is, um, yeah, uh, I, I can see that you try to add a few, few comments from the previous uh, meeting. But still, uh, it's not the, the way it doesn't gel around towards the solution. So what I'm trying to say is it, it's not a very complete pitching. So um, basically, you guys can work better and try to collate all the information given in the earlier section and to make a, a better pitching. But it's still lacking there. Um, a bit structured than the last time, but still, um, uh, it's not quite. I, I'm not quite buying it like, because it doesn't it doesn't reach me. I think uh, it's just my comment. I, I think uh, that's it from me. Uh, I have no question, but I just uh, a comment. Thank you, uh, Dr. Danko. Okay, thank you, Dr. Shuhaida, for the comments and the great uh, points to share with us today. Okay, I would like to ask the students with us today. We have group two, group three, and we also have some students from group four, five, and six to ask a question. Yeah, uh, excuse okay, me. I, I saw one of my students just now here. Okay, I saw Lim, sorry, Lim Zuan Huang from group three. Yeah. Hello, Miss. I think there is some uh, someone who want to ask. There's a uh, Tuan Luang raise hand. Uh, Tuan Luang, you can ask the question. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, can Can you guys hear me well? Just making sure. Yes. Yes, we can. Uh, yes, okay. We thank can. you. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, congrats on your presentation. Uh, it was a very nice presentation, and there were a lot of information that I find very useful. Although I have a question, uh, is that um, you mentioned about the gap. The, the presentation is basically about bridging the gap between urban development and uh, cultural heritage. And I want to ask is that, why does it matter? You know, like what is the, the problem that we are having in terms of gapping, in terms of bridging that gap? Uh, can you explain that a little bit further? Okay, thank you for one for the question. So okay, maybe I want to answer so, and then my partner and my teammate would like uh, adding something. So like the gap of the between uh so in here is like the gap is between over development and cultural heritage and why is the gap? Because we know that uh, some of the cultural heritage and uh, uh cultural heritage and some of culture itself is sorry, not set up um gap is like the lake. And uh, like the cultural heritage is not have good prevention that sometimes like we don't know what have 
what do what we have what culture we have in that area like that so why it's gap so maybe some culture have lost and some culture have erased in that place because, and make and some have some new culture because, because like in the in the first in the first like culture is uh, going 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 in the same way with the with the people so if the first people is not to prevent the culture so the culture is will is will be lost so that's why uh, we need to uh, culture heritage and urban development itself so have a good connection and uh, break the gap between both of them maybe my teammate will go into any support or get thank you um uh thank you for your answer uh i have one more question if that's okay uh and so we, we talk about the gap and you, you know like you said um and that makes me wonder you know different places have very different situation about what kind of gap that we're having and so what i want to ask is that is your solution based on one place in one area or in general Uh, may I un answer this? Like, I'll be turning off my camera because I'm afraid it's going to be too laggy. <laughs> the connection here is horrible. Okay, uh, fingers crossed. Let's hope that connection goes off. Okay, I'll answer your question. <clears throat> this is a very general statement. Okay, like we could see, that, as you have said, there's many, many different scenarios, many, many different situations like for different countries. Like, you're shown like an example, like in the United States, New York City was well, a developed country, maybe. Uh, we could say like somewhere like uh, in Tasmania, there's, that's a country in Africa, South Africa. It is a developing country. They need the funds. What's the quickest way to gain their funds? Well, through urban development. Social economic development is the wing that, you know, it could boost their economics, boost their GDP, so they can raise their, uh, you know, lives, living standards. Well, it's unfair to tell them like you have to invest most of your money into cultural use. You have to protect these old buildings which are crumbling down when they could otherwise spend that money on urban development, which gain, which gives them more GDP. However, there, there are a few points that we could show off like by investing in our cultural heritage, we are able to show off the uniqueness of our culture, not just as a country, us races, us people, like people living in that situation. Let me give you an example. Like, mm, it's going to sound a little bad, but I hope that it doesn't. So like the Chinese people, we are not just in China, we are all over the world. However, could you say the Chinese people in the United States are the same as the Chinese people? Could you say that people in Indonesia is the same as those in Malaysia? Well, they're bound to have some cultural differences due to their places and areas. And what we we're trying to say is that we help to in that kind of cultural uniqueness, which would boost and show off the individuality and furthermore evolve the culture. Well, that's all culture, right? They change from time to time. Yeah, that's it. what I'm liking, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, thank you for your answer. That, that was wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank Juhan. You I think we have one question here in the much chat box okay. from Abdul Rahman from Group 4. Well, he asked to know more about the events that you can do to educate people. Group 1 and the response. Um, okay. So this is actually a very nice question, which would further push our point a more clearer. So like, let's just say if we invest more into this kind of uh, cultural creative industries, which, you know, which they uh, host these kinds of events, they could make these kinds of events bigger. Let's just say, for example, in Malaysia, which is unique in the northern part of Malaysia, uh, there's this one festival we call as Jiu Wang Ye. So it's like praying to the dragon emperor god. Well, they have this huge, huge parades in a city and all that. So 
if each culture they would share like one of the most important or their most favorite event and host it in big public areas and show it to the world yeah this is the kind of events that we want to do to educate people you know like showing off our cultures things like that did i answer your question did that answer your question abrahman I hope uh, it is. You mean like uh, doing festivals using the, the cultural dance and these things? Yeah, like cultural appreciation events or just a festival in general, but creating a more larger scale compared to small scale ones. So everyone would know how unique and how awesome they are. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any more questions from the students, from the participants? Okay, thank you, Group One, for answering a few questions just now. A good presentation. Good job in responding to all the questions. We will move forward to the second group. I would like to welcome Audia Rahmat. For Zero, Muhammad Khalib, and also Kairo Nisa. You may begin your pitch. Yeah, hello, everybody. Um waiting for my team mates. Yeah, Nisa is sharing the screen. All right, yeah. All right, this is uh, group two and saying hi to everybody else. And the topic we will discuss here is about the cultural heritage tourism sector as a bridge to the urban development. And this is me, Mohammed Kalimullah from CUI Pakistan. And let's meet our teammates. Hi, I'm Kozarong from Unimap, Malaysia. This is Nisa presenting the slides and Ulia, and both of them are from Indonesia. So the next, I'm gonna let you guys know the outline, like what's going to be in our slides. Our slide is divided into sub, sub, uh, subsections, including from problem statement, introduction, urban development, culture, and heritage protections, and it's important challenges. We have proposed some case studies and then proposed solution, and then again, Q and A session. Yeah, the problem statement we have is, what solution could we suggest in bringing the gap between urban development and cultural heritage protection? Yeah. So before going going into anything else, I would like to uh, like I would just like to give an idea about the sustainable development goals. Like in 2015, world leader agreed to 17 goal developments. And they named that as Sustainable Development Goals, CDSS. And the one we are working on is Sustainable Development 11. The slides is all based on this as we got this uh, Sustainable Development to discuss things. Urban Development, uh, I would like to let us know like what is urban development, why we are focusing cities. The things why we are focusing city is because most of the people around about 4.2 million people lives in the cities, as well as 3% of the earth is occupied by the cities. Uh, same goes with the other things. So that's why we are focusing mainly on the cities. The next, what I would like to include in this thing is, yeah, give me a moment, please. 
All right. Yeah, the next targets we have selected for this thing, like there, there, there are some targets for sustainable development number 11, which are, which are kind of targets in which we have target number one, target number two, target number three. Uh, I just want you to give you an overview about the sustainable development goals. All right, uh, next, please. So here are our solution for the problem yeah. statement. Uh, we make a, frame, a framework of a solution to make a cultural heritage to become a tourism sector named SUPS. SUPS stands for Strategy, Pre-Operation, Operation, Preservation, and Sustainability. So our main idea is making a cultural heritage sites to become a culture sector to uh, educate people and also uh, promoting the cultural heritage. And the first S stands for strategy. It concerns prioritization, conceptualization, and policy planning. Uh, every planning needs to uh, build a, be a better strategy. So uh, we need to prioritize which one, the cultural sites that uh, we want to make a cultural sector because not every cultural sites are uh, the best one or the good one to to become to be promoted as the cultural sector uh, by considering the impacts in social, political, economical, and technical factors. Uh, and the second one is conceptualist conceptualization. Uh, this means to develop the concept of the tourism sector in details. And the last one uh, from the strategy is policy planning. Policy planning is also impor important because uh, this means establishment of local officers for the conservation and also establishment of the conservation policies. The first O stands for pre-operation. Before the operations runs, uh, we need to prepare what needs to do before uh, we really launch the culture sites. The first one is uh, the first one of, from the pre-operation is the restoration part means restoring the heritage buildings, like uh, we need to repair all the buildings so it's ready for the tourists. And the second one uh, is education. This means educate the people in the surrounding, like uh, what do they need to prepare, uh, how these cultural sites become beneficial for them. And the third, and the third from the pre-operation is collaboration. Collaboration is important because uh, we need to talk with the stakeholder uh, who are responsible about the culture sector buildings. And the second O stands for the operation. It is uh, consists of management, manage every, uh, every aspect of the tourism sites. Like uh, this not only, only uh, match for the buildings, but also uh, the people, the intangible culture uh, related to the cultural sites. And the second one is the promotion. Uh, the promotion means to gain people recognition about the culture we try to promote. And the third is technology. This, uh, the technology uh, help us to do the promotion and also help us to educate the people. Uh, we can add virtual tourism, add virtual reality and uh, AR as the education idea, like uh, these things. So, uh, Yes, yeah, from previous presentation, uh, we have suggestion that we need to uh, educate people more uh, from the intangible aspects. So uh, we can utilize technology such as VR and ER uh, to, to educate people and to talk with people about the intangible culture. And uh, P stands for preservation. It consists protection and storytelling. Protection is really important because uh, we can make the cultural cultural heritage uh, become sustainable and become uh, more long uh, more long term by uh, protect it. Uh, it's also protect the tangible and tangible aspects by preventing issues like disaster issues and also another issues. And uh, last not last but not the least, from the preservation is storytelling. Storytelling is uh, the main point of the preservation because storytelling make people more. Uh, connected with the cultural thing. Uh, it's mean telling the story of the people who settled the line or telling the story about how the culture affect the people from the surrounding. And the last one is sustainability. Sustainability consists of delivering the values and enhance the authenticity of the cultural heritage. Uh, we need to socialize the value of the cultural heritage because values is also uh, the important part of a culture of a culture so uh, if someone know the values of a culture uh, they become uh, have 
the authenticity to protect the culture and also uh, enhancing the authenticity makes people uh, more aware about uh, the existence of a culture. And here is the case study from uh, the first country that we uh, we want to promote is the Kota Tua from Jakarta. Kota Tua okay, is a two. You have three minutes left. Okay. Kota Tua is a multi-layered and complex urban heritage place that has local, national, and international significance. The site contains Dutch style structure, mostly dated from 17th century when the port city served as the Asian headquarters of VOC. And Kota Tua is in Jakarta, which is the most popular city in Indonesia. So here are the challenges from uh, Kota Tua to become a cultural uh, tourism sector. Uh, the first challenge is urbanization, the second is doctrinization and unawareness of the people, and the last one is economy. People who live in surrounding this area make less money rather than people who live in uh, CBD. So there is no job vacancies and people tend to not aware the uh, potential of this cultural heritage. And here are the subs implementation uh, for our study case in Kota Tua, Jakarta. And the next is case study from Taksila. Halim, can you continue? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, Texla. Texla is an architectural site located in Raul Pindi district, like a 30 kilometer northwest of Islamabad. This city is uh, dated back to the Gandhara periods and contained the ruins of the Gandharan city of Koksala, which was an important Hindu and Buddhist center and is still considered a place of religious and historical century in those traditions. Like in this, just because of this cultural heritage, many tour, tourist places, like tourists all around the world, uh, relate to the Hinduism and Buddhism, visit this place and find him a religious spot for their um, all kind of um, all kind of things. Yeah, and uh, next we have some other cultural things. Yeah, can you please swipe that? From the Pakistan, there are various cultural heritages which we got like the old kind of temples as well as we have so many uh, like Badshai Masjid and stuff like that. The one I have mentioned in another in Pakistan is at Munjadaro. It's a part in the Sindh, Sindh where it is also a old city uh, which we have and it's a very good cultural spot for all the tourists all around the world. And same goes for the next um, template. It's like a castle and it's also gained the attention of all kinds of tourism. So uh, all these cultural heritage are performing their way in economical as well as the tourism and the positive side of our country. Yeah. And I would like to next include the Malaysian part from my- I'm house. sorry, to your time is uh, I have to stop you here, okay? But I can see you stop here and stop you here, okay? And we proceed to the Q and A session. Any question from group, student from group one, group three, or even from group four, five, or six? While waiting for the question, I have one question. You have a very interesting and delightful thoughts on the urban development and heritage. You bring us again to Pakistan, Islamabad, and Indonesia. I've only been to Indonesia, I've never been to Pakistan. So it's very interesting to see pictures, colorful pictures, interesting facts on uh, this topic. Uh, my question is, I'm very interested on the concept of SOPS, S-O-O-P-S. How you come out with this concept? Can you bring us or can you talk us through how you come out with this concept? Yeah, Nisa, please. Okay, uh, thank you so much for the question. So uh, we come up with uh, the concept because uh, we, uh, we do kind of analyzes from the root problems. So, uh, 
the main problems of the cultural heritage uh, protection and the urban development things is that uh, no people or less people are aware about this cultural heritage. So um, uh, we come up with the idea about making the cultural heritage sites become a become a tourism sites. So uh, that's that. They were our ideas. So making the cultural heritage uh, sites become a tourism sites to make people more aware and uh, to educate people also. So the existence of the culture itself becomes sustainable. So uh, we come up with the sub framework. Uh, the more detailed uh, action how to make the cultural heritage sites become tourism sector uh, because not every cultural heritage sites are uh, in any country be can become a cultural uh, become a cultural tourism sector because there are a lot of things that we need to uh, we need to consider like the social economical and also the people in surrounding surrounding sector uh, and also we we need to uh, prioritize the value. So, uh, so we come up with a, a framework uh, about the action plan on, on how to make a cultural heritage become a tourism sector. Thank you, Karenisa. Good response. We have a couple of questions here at the chat box. First one is from Rani from Group 5. The question is, as we know, there is the industry that plays a major role in urban development. So he wants to know which strategy from the solution you offer can reach the industry. And how do you convince the industry to do so? Because all the time, the development can be carried out that would have been researched on the area and they were still building, building, built even more than they knew there was a cultural and heritage over there. Any comment or response from group two? Yeah, I, I would like to answer the Rani's question. It's like our soup idea. Soup's idea is mainly focused, like it's a structural way to all kind of, you know, overcome these kind of issues. When we, you know, go to, and when we take our soup idea to government as well as the private sectors, uh, they're surely going to show us like the interest in developing these things. Why government is interested and the industries as well as are, because as the country going to grow, and we're going to have more resources to visit to uh, target the um, you know the foreign audience uh, foreign audience yeah so you know the more people going to came the more business going to come so uh, i guess the soup idea like the way we are giving us pre operation as well as the strategy uh, is going to work and it's going to overcome this rani's question like how we're going to target this industries because we are already we are already arranging everything in a way from strategy to pre-operation to operation and the conclusions. Yeah, uh, I hope Ronnie got the answer. If, if somebody like, uh, if he, she didn't get that, um, here to answer that, okay. Thank you, Kalim. Uh, maybe Ronnie, you want to rebut the statement or any more question from Rani, group five. If it was okay, we still have another question, short question, short and sweet question. Okay, how you manage to sustain the cultural heritage from global or extreme weather, global warming or extreme weather? And what is your measure to prevent this? Yeah, okay. I would, uh, I would like to answer related to my country problems. Like uh, recently we have, uh, you know, green, clean Pakistan. Uh, like a, a thing was going on here and we have implemented around about four trillion trees it was a, like a huge campaign worldwide to overcome i don't know the country-wise campaign by the government to overcome the you know the warming global warming effect first of all like this um, this is of course going to done by the peoples while you know not cutting the trees to protect the global warming as well as uh, planting more trees to make a you know contribution towards uh, avoiding the global warming. Secondly, uh, of course, like we have to you know do something related to the civil engineering things to protect uh, from protect more from the extremely extreme weathers. Yeah, this is how it's gonna be working. All right, thank you, Kalim. 
We have another question in the chat box. Many questions for group two. Very interesting topic, it seems. Okay, uh, so another question from Ms. Wan Huang, group three. She asked, which management aspect do you think is the most important to be focused on during this COVID-19 pandemic era? So maybe, uh, Ku Zero, you have any opinion on this? Management aspect. It's like, like, first of all, I hope COVID is going to go over. But secondly, we have to be prepared uh, about, you know, any pandemic. So of course, you know, uh, in our suit, we're going to add more about, you know, in such kind of a situations when we have to have an, you know, management, especially for such kind of pandemic things. Otherwise, when we have going to have a pre-operation there and the operations, we're going to cover these kind of things for management as well as, you know, um, creating some more buildings and stuff like that. We're going to have a management team for all these kind of things. Uh, for me, I think the most important. Okay, to if be I can add some. Oh, really? Never mind. <laughs> Maybe Zero want to ask to want to say something first. Zero, please say something. <laughs> uh, for me, I think the management aspect. Maybe the visitor came cannot came to the country to pay a visit, but. Uh, because the heritage not just buildings, maybe some we can take some videos and to introduce our country culture, like maybe some traditional games, traditional dance, like that, to manage the tourists that attract. So maybe they will come after COVID. We need to do some promotion to, to maintain the tourism. Yeah, this one I think. Yeah. Okay, good point. I would so, like. Lisa, to, maybe you want to conclude. Yeah. I, yeah, I want to uh, you know uh, highlight Sir Abdul Ahadi's recommendation that we have added. We have already added in our slide, but unfortunately, because of short of time, our slide was too much long. But we have added our cultural heritage as well as some spiritual things in our uh, slides as uh, because of the recommendation by Sir Abdul Ahadi, and it was a great idea though. When we explored that and it was awesome like the games every country gonna have as a cultural heritage as well as dance music and yeah everything was a nice experience to explore that thing uh, thanks to Abuladi sir okay thank you group two for the good q and a session a lot of questions and i would like to welcome Balki Setia Tita, Bibi Angurin, Indah Yuliana, and Lim Zuan Fong to give your pitch. You may start now. Respected audience, Assalamu Alaikum. My name is Ambreen and I'm starting the presentation on behalf of my group three that consists of Ambreen from Pakistan, then it's Inda, Ayai, and Belkis. So we all know that the global community is uh, taking several initiatives to minimize the gap between the developed and the developing world. And uh, the most important step that the global community has taken, that is the adoption of sustainable development goals by the United Nations in 2015. So there are actually uh, 17 goals. Uh, Bilkis, can you please move to the next slide? Yeah, so there are actually 17 goals in total, but um, here the goal number 11 is under discussion that talks about the sustainable cities and communities, and that calls to make the cities and human settlements inclusive, safe and resilient and sustainable for the accommodation. So uh, uh, next, Bilkis. 
the topic of um, our presentation is about the inclusive cities but before going to the to the topic this is a slide that is given on the united nations website so this actually depicts the challenges and the solutions for the cities that the global um, you know community is facing like the challenges are the overpopulation then there is the um, mismanagement of the resource utilization there is the unplanned cities and the solutions are the um, proper planning of the city development, then the proper usage of the resources moving, shifting towards the renewable re energy resources and to develop the cities in a manner that can accommodate maximum people and that have the structures which enables them to uh, resist the natural disasters as well. Next. So uh, today our topic is uh, the suggestions for the development of inclusive cities for everyone, especially the underprivileged. So actually the inclusive cities ensure the availability of the facilities for the working poor as well. So they have all the facilities, they have the housing facility, they can enjoy the lives um, as the ones who are financially stable as they are doing. Next. So keeping in view all the challenges and solutions given by the United Nations, we have we came up with an idea for the proposal of development of the inclusive city or cities. So um, we have kept the following things in mind while developing this idea of the city that ensures the minimum resource utilization sustainable and reliable uh, accommodation of maximum people because the overpopulation issue is there, then the cities should be disaster resilient. There should be facilities for everyone like health and education and uh, steps should be taken for the poverty alleviation for, uh, from the community so the poor can also have the equal chances or facilities to live a healthy life. And of course, we have designed we came up with an idea of a city that is environmental friendly. So you, uh, in the coming slides, you will see how our um, proposed cities, they are economically stable, they are good for the underprivileged and how they are uh, environmentally good. Next. So moving to the next part of presentation, I am going to hand over the presentation to my group member that is Bilkis. Bilkis, over to you. Okay, thank you, Amrin. So our EAS is make a building model that's similar to the Colosseum. Or maybe you, you know that the low house in the Fujian Chinese as well. So why we choose this shape of the building? Because the shape is unique and then it's stable and strong and then it can provide uh, both sing single individual activities and communal activities. So the building usage is divided with two main functions, that is housing and communal activities. So in the upper level of the building, we can, uh, we can use it as the housing uh, consists up to four floors and the ground level is can be used for communal activity, such as home-based enterprises, religion and communal facilities, bazaar, orphanage or nursing home, park, school or educational facilities, and healthcare center. So this is the sketch of the building and the section, and then this is the uh, first level usage explanation. So this is the building plan and land usage is similar to the previous weeks. So this is the multi-story housing that we arrange it like flowers like shape, and then we we have to. Uh, add more connecting road than greenhouse in the middle so the people who have cultivating job can do this in here and then the green and then the rest is for the green open space so this is the building structure ideas uh, first is truss arch for the shape circular shape and then we, uh, but the axial Force component is good at mechanical but poor with stability. So we have to stable it with bearing wall, vertical steel frame, and concrete to make it more stable. And then the third is to uh, make a um, yeah, intermodular connection or modular that is uh, sustained with the earthquake. So to mitigate seismic activities, intermodular connection that can shift fill region away from the column 
the connection it can be replaced after the dynamic event. Two variation of the strange connection are proposed to joining AdSense. So this is the uh, modular that can shifting uh, follow the seismic activities. Next is will be present by AI. Okay, so solar energy is used worldwide and is increasingly popular for generating electricity for heating and desalinating water. Solar power is generated in two main ways, photovoltaics and also concentrated solar power we call it as CSP. PV is the cheapest one and also suitable for each family use. Due to this skill, solar plants require large areas negatively impacting the local wildlife and the habitats, although it can supply tens more times of electricity needed by humans. So in CSP tower system, the concentrated heat and large cooling towers can affect birds as they fly through the solar plants. Its hidden environmental costs make it less environmentally friendly, reliable energy source than most people believe, and hence we cannot fully rely on it. The basic principle of hydropower is using the water to drive turbines. By taking the advantage of gravitational force and water cycle, we can apply the Kaplan turbine but in high buildings, which is driven by the gray version. Next slide. Um, okay, so in this slide, it's showing how the gray water drives the turbine. And yep, next slide. So we talk about how to make these cities environmentally friendly. Landscaping and the vegetation is very important as it cools down our surrounding and also provides the shelter for small animals like owls, squirrels, etc. Building like we propose or condominiums could have vertical plantation area, either in units or in floor, which could supply some fresh vegetables cheaply to all. And according to SDG 11, means we aim to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. In developing countries, complete pedestrian lane or bicycle lane only exists in new built cities, even though governments are trying to develop a safe lane for us. But due to the limited space for some areas, safety isn't really achievable if the transport number keeps increasing. Right? And then lastly, about waste management. Informal waste pickers supplies more for all the solid waste collection, providing a public sanitation service at no or low cost. However, privatization of the waste and also the disposal techniques such as the incineration and also the waste to energy schemes are threatening the waste because livelihoods and so the environment. So reverse vending machine or we say plastic bottles exchanger on streets are encouraged to be installed by this so it could direct the bottles to proper recycling method. So preferably in charge by government. And so weekly or monthly recyclable stuff collection has been implemented by a lot of countries. So it could be kept up all the time. Yep, and I will pass to the next one. Thank you, II. The next is how to ensure economic stability. First is market for skill Me, under yeah, You You only have um, half one and a half minutes. Can you make it fast? Okay. And the second is taxes and bills distribution according to earning level of person or family. And that there is aspect in the tour of taxes collected from the rich on the poor segment on, of the same community or city. And the last is tourism point development. Next. How next is how the underprivileged can be encouraged to live in the city by educate them about using their skill and earn as well as manage money, such as small business idea, so they can have their own business, but in the field of poultry, cattle, vegetation, handcraft. And besides that, there are shelter homes and orphanage for people who don't have home. Next. Specific, specific program through the organization. To create community that moves toward progress, we also need schedule of community activities. These activities will be coordinated through the organization, like literacy class, self-development class, parenting class, yoga, and meditation. So it will make communities or cities will have good performance, good mental health, and good environment to grow up together. Next. Our conclusion is city based on this model where all this idea will be implemented can act as inclusive city where everyone get all the facilities, especially the underprivileged one. And the gap between the rich and the poor can be minimized in such community or cities. Next. 
this is our reference and thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, group three. What an interesting and in-depth discussion. Very good presentation, very colorful, full of information. I like it very much. All right, okay, so we can proceed to the Q&A session. Let me check if there are any questions in the chat box. Okay, so while waiting, I have one question. I would like to ask this question to Lim Zuan Huang. All right, okay. Okay. Um, just now you have talked on the sustainability. I'm very interested in how you use the gray water, okay? Uh, in your gray water power plant, that is my first question. And another, another one is on the uh, waste management and also drainage, okay? Just now you have uh, give an example for the recycling. Uh, maybe you can elaborate on that. Okay, so I'll talk about the gray water first. So every building also produces gray water every day. So by using the gravity, especially in high buildings like condominiums like I would say just now, you can using the gravity and as they, as you install the turbine in the pipe there. So it's a mini turbine by using that theory to produce electricity that supplies that whole building. So maybe it's not really enough for all, but enough for that whole building itself. And next will be the waste management. So about the recycling, uh, recycling method. So in my study, I studied about that. The monthly and weekly management system isn't really good. So maybe we could implement like Japan. So strictly strict law and so the implementation should be done by the government itself instead of calling residents to recycle the stuff. Uh, have I answered your question? <laughs> Okay, I'll accept your answer. All right, okay. Um, maybe we have a uh, fans here from ITS. Okay, you have questions? Okay, thank you for the time. I am Panzer from the group six. But first, I want to appreciate your presentation. It's a nice presentation. Uh, so my question is, as we know, the impact of pandemic is affect our aspects some country implement the regulations such as social distancing work from home and uh, health protocol and my question is uh, does your facility your design building is meet the health protocol i think your building is too crowded then i think it might spread the virus uh, do you get what i mean hello Hello. Yes, yes, we get it. Oh. Thank you. Okay, maybe Balkis can answer. Okay, thank you for your opportunities, Mr. Nuraiti. I, I, I will uh, try to answer the question. Is your facility meet the health protocol? Okay. I can see that the health protocol is made with whether the building is well has well sanitation, such as circulation, and then the corridor as well is pro uh, provide uh, wide enough to provide people to stand in the minimum 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 height for each other. Um, so, and then uh, we can. Uh, add more sanitation facilities such as was table in the some point that is necessary and that is a um, place for the crowd like this. Maybe uh, my friend would like to add more answer. Uh, so the solution is maybe you make the facility like was table, right? Oh, okay, okay, I get it. Yes, uh, I, I'd like to add more. So the circulation, air circulation of each house is have to be, um, it has to be uh, arranged, well arranged and the corridor in the house is have to be 
uh, wide distance so it can it can um, it can facilitate uh, facilitate to people in the safe distance do you get my point so, yep yep i get it okay Uh, thank you, Fancy. Yeah, I would um, like to ask a question. Okay, Kalim, you may ask question. Yeah, the, my question is like, why we are targeting the urban areas only, not the rulers? Why is that? Like, why we are mainly focusing on the urban areas? I have. That's it. That's the question. Well, actually, the plan in our group is actually can be applied in urban and also rural area. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like it both achieve the your proposed plan can be implemented on both sides. Yeah. Like either in a tall building yeah, or in the circle shape. So maybe okay. maybe you can say that the building isn't really pretty enough, but it actually applies to both. <laughs> Yeah, for the status oh, sustainability. Okay, okay. Thanks. Yeah, and uh, I would like to add more because uh, since, you know, uh, the United Nations is majorly focusing on the Africa and Asia. So these two continents, they are facing the issue of overpopulation. And still there is like, majority of the people they are poor and they move to the cities to search for the jobs and for the studies etc so majority of the population it is going to be accommodated in the cities they are leaving their towns like kaleem you must be familiar with because here in pakistan we are also like majority of the people they are from the northern areas or from the underdeveloped villages but still they settle in the cities to have the facilities. That is why we are using this word cities and cities again. Uh, and the cities are consuming almost all of the energy resources. So that is why. And again, as Inda said, we can um, uh, you know, apply this model to um, any area. It's not specified for the cities only. So it is, uh, you know, um, it is um, an overall estimated idea to develop the cities and the buildings. Yeah, okay, okay, got it. Thank, thank you. Okay, thank you, Amreen. Uh, thank you, Karim, for the question. We have a few questions in our chat box. Let me check. We have one here from Jordan. Jordan from Group 1. There is a question here. In terms of accessibility to all and the environmental sustainability, is there some way we can strike a balance in between? Or we have to compromise between the two. Okay, so thank you for Jordan's question. So I think it can be balanced up. Like uh, in terms of work, the informal pay waste because they actually collect the waste and they sell it. So it actually reaches the sustainability and also they get the accessibility, as we say, inclusive. They actually recognize as the formal waste speaker as well. And for the landscape, or we say the building planning, yeah, the plan is very important if you want to achieve the balance one instead of uh, focusing on the safety and also not really focusing on the environmental. So we have to reach the balance with the planning, good planning. Okay, thank you, Zuan Huang. Uh, we have a question from Dr. Noriza also here. She asked on... Let me see. Okay. Why did you say that the selected trust is not stable? Okay. Anyone from group three? Okay. Maybe I will try to answer based on the journal that I read in the journal that uh, written by, I'm sorry for a minute, Zhou Wang and etc. cetera. Uh, the arch, arch trust that trust that made um arch it's not stable so it it have to uh, more uh, stabilized by the another uh, another trust 
another component. So that is a vertical component. So it can be another truss and it can be, a, I mean, and it can be another vertical truss or it can be masonry wall or it can be concrete. I think, I think that's it. Okay, thank you, Valkis. And maybe lastly, we can invite one, sorry, lastly, I think it is uh, to Anhuang. Right, just now you raise your hand. Yes, uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, I, I just have a few quick questions. Uh, so in your idea, you mentioned about uh, building a new structure in your cities. And that, that kind of makes me wonder. So um, since we're already building new structure every day, so like what makes your idea special or like really, really special compared to other ideas of buildings that we have that makes people want to move in there and live there? And that's the first question. And the second question is that, uh, is the structure necessary or you can apply the whole concept to the cities that you want to build? And those are the two that I want to ask. Can I answer your first question? Uh, the first is like, why this is, because this is, which is very unique. As you know, this is, this shape is like Colosseum that very resilient for every disaster. So it can be very long term building. Yes, and about the accommodation, if we talk about the accommodation, because uh, we have proposed an idea where uh, we, we kept this idea for all the people who are economically stable and who are striving, I mean, who comes from the slums. So actually the idea is included in the presentation that uh, the part of the community will be dedicated for the ones who are rich enough, who can pay the taxes and the duties, etc. So the government that uh, is collecting the taxes from the economically stable part of the community, they will spend the exact money on the ones who are underprivileged. So in, in this idea, actually, if this whole idea, this whole concept is adopted, definitely it is going to be helpful for everyone. And as you said that, okay, if only the idea can be adopted, yes, there are certain ideas like how we can make the cities environmental friendly, that is entirely a separate thing. How we can um, enhance the uh, economic stability, that is entirely a separate thing. So yes, these ideas can be uh, adopted collectively or even a single idea can be collected, like the gray water energy solution, like the small businesses ideas for the underprivileged. So I hope we managed to answer your questions. Uh, yes, that was great. Uh, thank you. Right, okay, uh, good job, uh, group three. So, so you have uh, able to answer all the questions asked just now. Well done, good job. Okay, so moving along. So before that, uh, we have finished. Okay, we have finished all the presentation. We have finished all the pitching session by group one, group two, and group three. Well done, everyone. And moving along is the briefing on the point distributions. And this is very important by technologist Dr. Ho Peng Yong. I'll pass the mic to you, Dr. Atta. All right, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, there you have it, our wonderful, wonderful and brilliant uh, moderator for today, meeting number three, where I have uh, Dr. Tunku, yeah? Uh, Dr. Tunku, Dr. Tunku Noriati, yeah? Noriati Tunku Aisa from yours best, <laughs> yours very best, University of Malaysia Police, our very own, very good uh, moderator today. So yeah, um, so first of all, uh, thank you so much for joining us until these sessions. And uh, there you have it, you heard it from group one, group two, and group three. So, uh, and of course, their respective uh, question and answer, and of course, rebuttal. I think all three groups have done really, very good jobs. I can personally see a lot of improvement from meeting two. And uh, congratulations to all group one, two, three again. Uh, a special shout out to the audiences who have asked questions. I think uh, your question, if it's not as good as the presentation, 
uh, is equally, I think, is equally important in order to improve the understanding uh, of everybody, including the presenters as well as the audiences as well. With that said, uh, the point distribution for this particular program is divided into two. The first part is, of course, coming from the reviewers, where we have all of them, all six of them are with us today. Right, I'm sure we heard it from Associate Professor Dr. Shuhaida just now. And of course, I personally see, personally see Associate Professor Dr. Abdul Haki is with us. And of course, Dr. Nordiza, she has asked a question as well just now. Uh, of course, uh, we have all three lecturers from UNIMAP. We have also have three more lecturers from ITS. So we have Dr. Engineer Didits, and then we have Pak Prananda, as well as Ibu Noenda as well. So thank you. Thank you so much. All the reviewers have joined us today as well. Despite you guys are not allowed to ask questions at some point, we, you still ask questions just to get clarifications. And uh, for those who do not know, they will actually judge all three groups, one, two, three, to get today once again, uh, just to see how much they have improved since the last meeting. So these six lecturers, ladies and gentlemen, especially for the presenters, though these six lecturers or uh, the reviewers will be giving you 50% out of 100%. 50% of the total marks that each of the group will be gaining. So you might wonder, how do you have another 50% of the marks to be given to, to, to be awarded to each of the groups? So this comes in a very, very important session, which is, of course, the voting session today. So let me just brief you through how do we vote. So every single group uh, will be put up for voting. And uh, the simple, the, the question that we are going to ask you will be very, very simple. It is as simple as which one is the best presenting group, in your opinion. So based on what you have learned from meeting two, based on what you have learned from meeting three and your Q&A sessions or you listen to their Q&A session and how do they answer uh, the question that has posted to them, uh, the chemistry of the groups, how well they can help each other to rebut or to have the rebuttal dance and how do they answer the questions uh, and how effective is their solution basically for the problem statement they have chosen. So all those will have to be part of your con consideration of choosing which group is the best presenting group. So it is entirely up to you and you, everyone, the audiences, you are together with us in our Zoom meeting room today. We are going to start the polling session very quickly. So every each one of you may only vote one. All right. So we will look into the number of votes that is given to each of the group, group one, two, and three. And the 50% should come from there. So for example, 60% of the votes goes to group number one. So the group number one will get 60% of the remaining 50%. So you will see the marks given by the audiences will have a lot of say over here. So that same goes to our reviewer as well. So the reviewers, uh, the lecturers, the invited lecturers, and of course the moderator, me, myself, and my staff over here, whoever who are here, we are allowed to vote for only one group. So reviewers, students, including group one, two, three, four, five, six. If you think, for example, if I am group number one, I feel like, oh, group three has done a very good job. You can vote for group three, no problem. But if you think you have done a very good job, you can vote for yourself. We have no issue on that. So, but everyone will have only one vote. All right. So yeah, uh, so we are going to start the group voting very quickly. So I'm just going to, take this opportunity to make to do something fun all right so let me let's let's just not spotlight on me right? KJ let's stop spotlighting on me <laughs> my face is very really big now so uh, I'm going to give 10 seconds 10 seconds to group one group followed by group two and followed by group three so that you can try to promote yourself asking people to vote for you but you are only given 10 seconds are you ready? So I will start with group one, followed by group two, and followed by group three. So let me call upon group one. Group one, any rep, uh, representative from group one? Maybe you have Jordan. Is Jordan around? 
Jordan, or maybe Monjuara. Monjuara, are you here? Or maybe Kulish or Aldinar? <laughs> Everyone suddenly become very shy now. Okay, never mind. Maybe group one is getting ready. Maybe we can go to group three first. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are all still here because they just finished answering everything. So group three, we have Valkis, BB, uh, sorry, Ambrin, and then we have Inda and Zhuang Huang. So yeah, who wants to promote themselves to, so that they can vote for group three? Maybe Ambrin, what do you think? Yes, okay. All right, so let's spotlight on Ambrin. <laughs> All right, Ambrin, are you ready? You have 10 seconds, start from three, two, oh, one. Oh, one second, go. one second. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I have to request them for voting because uh, connection is really bad here. Right, so, so we will start the voting very quickly. So I'm giving you the chance to promote your group three so that everyone will vote for you. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I will, but I will give, I, I will go, I'm going to give you 10 seconds only. All right. So okay. by the count of three, you may start, then I will stop you. All right. Three. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So I take a deep breath. I will start counting now. Three, two, one, and go. So guys, as you all know, uh, we have tried to cover almost all the aspects and to propose the solutions for almost all the challenges that the United Nations has highlighted. And we have tried to cover not only the goal number 11, but to propose the solutions Five, for the remaining goals, four, how we can, um, three, you know, stabilize two, the cities economically, socially, and environmentally. So one, please vote for our group. Thank you. Five. Okay, zero. All right, very well done. Very well done. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So, so you can now you know how fast you can speak under pressure, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Group Three and Brain. So let's go back to Group One. I hope Group One is ready now. <laughs> right. So Group One, we have Ali Fuman from ITS. We have Jordan Yong from Unimap. We have Mon Juara from Daffodil. And of course, we have Kulish Aldina from ITS as well. All right, Jordan looking great now. I think he's very ready now. <laughs> All right, let's yes, spotlight yes, on I've Jordan. My Wi-Fi. Right. <laughs> so Jordan, you have 10 seconds. Are you ready? Yes. All right, you will start in three, two, one, and go. Let's be honest. The true solution to everything is education. There's nothing else around it. Let's don't complicate stuff further. Education is the way. Thank you very much. Okay, I don't I didn't even have time to count now. <laughs> very, very confident, Jordan. Very, very confident. So yep, there you heard it from group one. So he says that education is the most important thing. Apparently, I can smell the wall between group three and group one. I don't know. I don't know. Let's let's let the audience dis discuss and decide. All right. Of course, last but not least, we'll have group two. So group two. We have Aulia, we have uh, Zirong, and we have Kardem as well as Nisa. So yeah, who wants to represent group two? Is it Zirong? Is it Nisa? Which one? I think I will be the <laughs> representative. Right. Can Zirong? All right, are you ready? Yeah. All right, so you will start in three, two, one, and go. If you guys think the presentation for group two is good like the tourism things about the heritage and urban management you guys can vote, vote to group two thank you very much everyone. all right same short but precise and concise uh, comments and i don't know is it a good if our time I... if our time didn't end up i will say the suits idea was the best <laughs> because we right. precisely we precisely given all the steps from pre-operation operation right. strategy everything right so definitely you guys I... vote for two <laughs> vote for two right votes group two group two that is what Kalim says so, uh, so you heard it from group two the special one with two representative from group two and definitely, definitely uh, just a quick disclaimer uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen group one, two, three I am sure all of your presentation are very, very well done. The same goes to your Q&A sessions as well. But unfortunately, at the end of the day, we will only have one winner. 
All right. So ladies and gentlemen, the audiences, lecturers, invited lecturers, all the staff from Unimaps and uh, ITS as well, we are going to start the voting session very soon. Right after we have started our voting session, we will go for an interim break. So after we come back from the interim break, we will stop the voting session. So you will only have around 10 minutes to vote. All right. So if you want to ask your friends to come into the Zoom meeting now to vote for you, it's up to you. We can allow them, but uh, please don't do that. <laughs> May the best winner win. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to start the poll now. Are you ready? All right, we'll start the poll in five, four, three, two, and go. So everyone, you should have the voting box pop up in front of you if you are using Zoom. So those who are joining us from YouTube, unfortunately, you are unable to join us in the voting. But please do stay with us until the end of today's program. We have some more uh, agenda that comes after this. So everyone, do not need to rush. You have 10 minutes to think which group is the best. So please take your time. All the best. Sit back and relax and enjoy some of our promotional videos that we have prepared for you. Thank you so much. i see you in 10 minutes. Bye-bye and take care. Lah Aceh, lah nenas memotong nenas 
Mari dipotonglah bingkai berbingkai bingkai Sungguhlah aku lah ganas buaya ganas Tetapi makanlah bangkai memilih bangkai Can you follow me? Like this? Yes. Oh no 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 no! Don't show them. I'm very embarrassed right now. All right. Everything that I have dreamed of, all the gold that I have longed for, every goal that I've inclined to, this is the moment of truth. So much more than just the glory. We are writing our own history. Heaven found me right on our side. This next path looking so bright. Now the game is tied. Get my focus right. Participants, presenters, and our beloved reviewers. Before we proceed, I would like to announce the voting has closed. Thank you, everyone, for your vote. We check everybody has voted. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, okay. So next in our agenda is a very interesting session. The students and the reviewers' reflections. 
on the virtual mobility program Teens Idea 2021. In this session, we would like to hear all the feedback, response, or even comment from the participants, the presenters, and also our reviewer. Today, we also have, I think I have, we have all the reviewers today. We have Dr. Shohaida, Dr. Abdul Haki, and Dr. Nuliza from UNIMAP. Pak Didi, Pak Prananda, and Ibu Nur Indah from ITS. We would like to hear from you guys today. Um, maybe we can start our session with some reflection from our presenters first. Okay, maybe uh, we can have first Alif, Alif Umam from Group 1 to give your comments or respond on our program. Okay, we skip Alif. Sorry, we skip Alif and Jordan. Again, Jordan, any any comments on our program? We love to hear from you again, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Oh, we do that, Jordan. All right, okay. Uh, skip. Let's skip to group three. Mm, I don't want to call Lizan High anymore because I know she's nervous. She's my student actually. Uh, okay. Uh, we can have. Can we have Indah? Okay, Indah. We have Indah. Okay. Indah? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, can you give some comments or some, what do you think of this program? What you have learned? Do you make any friends? Any comment on that? Yeah, I'm very enjoying this program because this is very interesting and I like to meet my friend in the conference in this and of also thank you for the reviewer for giving uh, uh, for us to make better proposal. Thank you for all I think. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, we have Kalim. Is Kalim still here? Oh, I no, Kalim is not here. Okay, let's see. We have Zerong. Ah, okay, Zerong. Any comment or any any suggestions to improve? Okay, you mm. may stay here today. I think the the problem main problem is the connection, internet connection. That's all. Others no comment. Yeah. This is what I think. Hello? Can can you hear me? All right, okay. All right, okay. Uh, maybe we have some comments from our reviewers. Can we start with Ibu Norinda? Okay, thank you, Ibu Tengkunuraiti. Uh, from readings and presentation given by all the groups, uh, it's an impressive narrative given in a way that collaboration between ideas is coming on the way. The following ideas is generally constructive and sometimes, in specific term, challenging. I strongly believe that the collaboration could move to a real solutions, a feasible ones, by more discussion and mitigative narration, again, in a strong understanding between ideas. It is interesting to see a new generation build a strong bridge between all differences. And I could see a positive vibes through discussion along. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Ibu Nur Indah. Okay, maybe uh, we have Dr. Haki. Dr. Haki, any suggestions or comment? You have been with us last week as well and also this week. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tengku. Hi, everyone. Assalamualaikum. Um, first of all, I would like to congratulate, congratulate uh, all the participants okay, for uh, make it uh, successfully. Um, uh, I think uh, the participants already um, uh, 
contribute a significant efforts right to to make it happen right uh, the important thing is uh, you have i'm sure you have gained a lot of uh, experience especially on your soft skills right your self confidence to present how you communicate with your friends from different countries and then how you make a negotiation between your team right so that's the most important things uh, through this uh, program i think because the, the, the knowledge that you you, you gain uh, the, the theoretical part you can get from uh, various sources for internet and from your textbooks and so on but the soft skills is things that you need to uh, practice to make uh, you become better, right? So this is one of the pl platforms um, organized by uh, the organizers. So uh, congratulations to all. Uh, you already, you take these uh, opportunities, right? To improve yourself uh, uh, along the journey in the, the new still, all right? Okay, I think uh, that's all from me. Uh, uh, again, congratulations to all. You have done a good job. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tengku. Thank you, Dr. Abu Haki, for the insights and also the suggestions and also comments. I think it is good uh, advice, not only for students that have presented in meeting three, but also for the group four, five, and six that will be present in the session two. Okay, next, maybe we can have Dr. Noliza to give her comment. Uh, let's skip Dr. Noliza first and we can proceed with pa Prananda. Hi, pa Prananda, are you here? Yes, I am. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tengku. Um, congratulations uh, to all participants. Um, for the, on, on congratulations on your impressive ideas. It is um, it is even more impressive knowing that uh, you ha you come from a you come from a variety of uh, of academic backgrounds. Um, and not not only uh, not only uh, not only architecture and uh, planning, I suppose. Um, so <clears throat> that that just makes it even more impressive. And um, you did very well in pushing through the uh, the technical difficulties. I'm sure if the situation um, if the situation were better, uh, we could have you know we could have had a a. a Person to person, a face to face discussion, and uh, we didn't have to deal with um, with internet connection drops and uh, other technical nonsenses as such. Um, hopefully, uh, the upcoming hopefully the upcoming uh, Teen Ideas events uh, uh, will be uh, <coughs> will be under different uh, will be under different uh, or better circumstances. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Papa Nanda, for your opinion and comment. I appreciate it. And maybe next we can request uh, Dr. Shuhaida to give her comment and some ideas for improvement. Thank you, Dr. Tanku. I think I already commented earlier, which is I'm not supposed to do so at the first, I mean, at uh, the, the beginning of the session. But anyway, I am. Overall, I see improvement. Uh, I think the students actually pick up some of the comment from the earlier session, which is uh, which is good, meaning that uh, you, you do what you're supposed to do as a student. Um, uh, use all the information to um, to make your presentation a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, but somehow, I think uh, I, I do agree on the technical difficulty that the students are facing, which is the internet connectivity is not really much on your favor, I think, today a lot of um, uh, connection cut off in between the sessions. So, uh, but uh, I, I think overall, the, the presentation um, a lot better than uh, the earlier session and student actually, uh, I think, uh, did uh, put some effort in try to make sure that their pitching is successful. I think well done, everyone. Thank you, Tunku. 
Thank you, Dr. Shahida. I do agree with you. The students have tried their best to present today and also last week. I applaud them. Okay, next, uh, we can, maybe we can have Pak Didi, okay, Pak Didi to give some comment and idea for improvement. Okay, thank you. Ooh, thank you. And all of you, um, to be honest, it's kind of uh, really, really hard to make a judgment, you know, like um, we never meet each other, yeah? we don't we don't do like um actually i'm from architecture so usually we do the the idea brainstorming and evaluation by uh, directly sketching to your paper and give you some uh you know some you know some uh, improvement and anything but it's kind of um we only met maybe only two times today right and I really appreciate that uh, you can manage the time, you can manage the uh, all of your assignment, all of uh, the works. Even I'm sure that you also doing another works uh, in terms of uh, in un your, your university, maybe. Yeah, it's uh, I feel you. Yeah, I, I was like you before. I joined some workshop with uh, my friends from other countries, and it's really fun. Yeah. And sometimes I think that um, uh, those kind of even that make me like this right now, you know, uh, some of us uh, have, you know, got, got the project from each other in the future, maybe. Or, or maybe some of you will become um, a lecturer or some of you become researcher or some of you become planner you're busy with your project don't forget your friends okay so keep in touch also um just if you have instagram or anything i don't know you have a twitter or, or facebook or anything youtube you can still keep in contact and uh, please uh, this word need you yeah yes and the future is need you need this idea okay so keep fighting and keep uh, the best for our environment. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Fadi, for your comments. Very good comments. Listen, so all the students take this to bring you or to shape you into the future for becoming a better person and also maybe still a better student in the future. Uh, do we still have Dr. Noliza with us? Uh, yeah, hi Dr. Noliza. All right, okay. Uh, I would like to call Dr. Noliza as our last reviewer to give her comments or maybe some idea for future program uh, for improvement. Okay, thank you. Uh, one moment, I would like to put the microphone. Sorry for the inter excellent voice from here. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Yes, Dr. Marisa. Okay, okay. So, okay. Sorry for my daughter's uh, uh, voice and everything. I just pick up her from. Uh, Kitty, okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone for particip participating in this uh, very good event uh, to create idea, to generate idea from the young young students, uh, and then and I've, and also I would like to congratulate to all because you have the idea and brave enough to give uh, your opinion and also to give your knowledge to share with the other country and then also um, uh, collaborate with each other uh, to bring up uh, the project and also uh, the, the solution for the SDG 11. Okay, uh, and also uh, I will also like to thank the organizer, okay, for appointing us as the reviewer and uh, wish you luck and keep in touch for each other and also if you come to malaysia for those who are not here yeah just can contact us and can find us in the website and so on okay thank you 
Thank you, Dr. Noriza. Yes, we welcome everyone to come to UNIMAT. Okay, so we have Dr. Shohaida, Dr. Abu Haki, Dr. Noriza, Pak Didi, Pak Prananda, and Ibu Norenda have given their feedback and also some input for improvement. We still have some time and we want to hear from the students. Okay. Anyone, anyone to give their comments? I think Munjuara has all written on her camera. I believe she wants to say something. Munjuara. <laughs> Are we losing Munjuara? Okay, maybe we proceed to... Next one, before we come back to Manjuara later on. Uh, we have... Karunisa, do we have Karunisa? Yes, I'm here. Okay, uh, maybe Hello. something from Karunisa? <laughs> okay, uh, pardon, uh, what was? Uh, Karenisa, can you give us some comments for oh. the virtual mobile program, ITN's idea? Okay, uh, I'm really happy to have this opportunity to join the virtual mobility program from Unimap and ITS. Uh, it's indeed a fun program and I really learned from my teammates and also from the uh, students from other groups, uh, it's really an amazing idea and uh, it makes me want to learn more and more uh, regarding the topics because this is actually not my uh, major and uh, yeah, it's my cross major and uh, I gain uh, really much insights from this program. And also I had a lot of new friends from here. It's indeed a real fun program. Okay, thank you, In Misa. Okay, uh, do we have a representative from group one? You want to listen to someone from group one? Munjuara? All right, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. There is no more volunteers to give some comment or maybe some feedbacks. We can proceed with our next agenda. All right. Uh, next is the briefing, okay, by Dr. Astria Nurifansha, uh, the senior manager for the International Partnership ITS Global Engagement. He will give some briefing and also some preview for the second session. I pass the virtual floor to you, pa Astria. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Tengku, no writing. Uh, thank you. Right, uh, so my name is Irfan. I'm from ITS, Global Engagement Office. And in this evening, or sorry, uh, we will provide some preview and, and some briefing for all participants about the second round of Teen Ideas. So if I may share my screen. And can you see my screen and is my voice clear? I hope it is. All right. So uh, the second round of Teen Ideas 2021, uh, which covers meetings four, five, and six, will be on a slightly different topic. Uh, previously, in the first round, uh, meeting one, two, three, we were uh, discussing about uh, SDG 11. It has been a very wonderful uh, three sessions yeah, uh, so far and we really hope that this can continue to the next round. So SDG 12, what is it? It's Responsible Consumption and Production. Yep, 
here are some important dates of the meetings. Basically, it's the same. It's very similar to meeting one, two, and three, uh, where in the first meeting, we will have lectures. In the second and third meeting, we will have uh, your presentation, the group presentations. There will be one extra meeting, meeting seven, where there will be a grand closing and award giving ceremony. For the lecture session in meeting four, um, we will have two uh, guest lecturers from Unimap and from ITS. From Unimap, it will be Associate Professor in Senior, Dr. Mohammad Ridaus Omar. I believe this is a colleague of uh, Dr. Athar, yeah? from the same department, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah? <laughs> Uh, he, he will be uh, bringing a lecture titled Sustainability Concept in Materials Processing, Responsible Consumption and Production. From ITS, uh, the speaker will be Associate Professor Maria Anidasari, PhD. Uh, she hasn't given a, a fixed title yet, but what we know, it might be related to waste reduction and zero waste practice for responsible consumption. So it's, it's a nice mix here. One, one is uh, maybe talking more about the production process and the other uh, talking more about consumption. And the groups to be presenters will be group four. Uh, please correct me if I put the wrong group name, but if I'm mistaken, uh, group four is unbeatable, group five resonance, and group six, ah, I don't know how to, how to read this, what were what, what your spider? What is that? <laughs> Not sure. All right. Uh, so please prepare, yeah? Group four, five, and six. You'll be presenting this time. The reviewers will come from ITS and Unimap. From ITS, it will be Dr. Arfan Fahmi, Bapak Nishonifun Faiz Suki Hartanto, and Ibu Ratna Vidyaning Room, KHD. From Unimap, it will be Dr. Nursheh Aizat Shuit. Dr. Arthur, yeah, Ru Pengyong, and Dr. Sarah Yasina Binti Yusuf. Uh, the theme for the second round is just, uh, we're just copycatting uh, Dr. Arthur's idea. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Arthur, for <laughs> bringing up with this very good, good uh, theme, but we just adjusted for SDG 12. So it's Gen Z's voice and ideas for responsible consumption and production, basically that. The problem statements will be presented later on, not now, not today. Uh, it will be presented by the committee after the lectures on meeting four. So for the group four, five, and six, please uh, really pay attention to the lectures. And then once the problem statement is announced, um, you will be given some time to discuss this among yourselves. And, and you, you, you have to choose one of the problem statement for your presentation later on. But it, the problem statements will be about your concern and solutions on either responsible consumption, responsible production, sustainable production, or minimum waste, or it could be something else. Please stay tuned. The evaluation criteria will be the same. So just for fairness, it will be the same as, as before. So the first is thorough idea exploration and then quality of proposed solution. Teamwork, presentation skills, presentation media, the quality of the Q and A, the answering, and uh, you'll be given uh, two chances of presentations, right? So we want to see some improvements in the second idea pitching. And as a note, there will also be a voting session, just like uh, today. So in meeting five, when the student groups present their first time. Uh, it will be the same as before, yeah? Presentation and idea pitching will take 20 minutes, Q&A 10 minutes, and then there will be overall feedback from reviewers 20 minutes. In meeting six, it will be slightly different. Uh, each group represent the improved idea pitching for 10 minutes, and then there will be Q&A with the audience for 15 minutes. And afterwards, just like now, just like, like just what we had now, there'll be voting results on education, students and reviewer reflections for 30 minutes. That's it from us. So uh, we're, we're looking forward uh, to be hosting the second round. And thank you and good luck. Terima kasih semoga lancar, semoga berjaya untuk semua.
Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Pak Irfan. We also wish you good luck and semoga lancar for the session too. <laughs> new words. We learn new words every day. Okay. Uh, again, thank you, Pak Irfan. We all will be anticipating the session two that will begin next week. So in our agenda, next is the closing remarks by our beloved director of Center for International Engagement UNIMAP, Associate Professor, Dr. Tunku Salha Tunku Ahmad. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Noraiti, and <clears throat> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and a very good evening to all. So um, I would like to say thank you very much to everyone, uh, the organizing committee, of course, from uh, ITS and also from UNIMAP. Uh, so thank you for the commitment, for the uh, dedication, hard work, and to make this program successful, the first round of uh, Teen Ideas Unity One. So based on my observation, I can say that uh, the students, uh, especially the presenters have successfully, I think I can say that they have um, enhanced their confidence level and also improved their language skills, the thinking skills and um, widen the knowledge on specific topic, uh, particu particularly on this SDG, SDG 11. So uh, what we hope that uh, besides um, making new friends from this program, we hope that students um, will be able to develop those uh, skills. Um, I think uh, currently uh, the, the industries, uh, the employers are not only looking at the academic performance, they are also looking at the um, skills, the abilities that students can have. For example, um, uh, how students can think out of the box. So through this program, I think students manage to give uh, critical ideas, uh, uh, I mean, uh, good ideas, uh, uh, and can think critically to provide uh, new ideas in terms of the discussions and also uh, to uh, give opinion on something on some topic. So uh, hopefully um, we can extend this program uh, in future and hopefully we can uh, make this program as a signature program uh, for the organizing committees, ITS and UNIMAP, and we can extend uh, the participation of the presenters to more institutions, uh, hopefully inshallah. inshallah. So, uh, we look forward to seeing all of you again in the next round of Teen Ideas 2021 uh, that will be hosted by uh, ITS. And I wish all the best to Bapa Irfan and team, to Dr. Professor Maria and team. And um, that I think uh, that's all from me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Noraiti. Thank you, Dr. Tunku Salha, for amazing, amazing closing remarks. Thank you. Again, hopefully all the students here can take all her points and her advice in order to shape, okay, to shape yourself because you are not only need all this knowledge that you learn in the classroom, but you also need all these soft skills uh, in the future as well. All right, okay, I would like to remind all the attendees, please uh, fill the attendance form that we have shared, the committee have shared at the chat box. Please fill the attendance. All right, okay, so we come nearly to the end of session one, but not before the group photo session. All right, okay, how are we going to do this? Uh, we're going to take three sets of photo. Uh, first one is, uh, Former, okay, I would like to say a formal group photo where everybody smiles to their camera. The second set will be a freestyle uh, photo session. Okay, we can have uh, all these gestures, lovely gestures uh, captured for our group photo session. And maybe the last set, we can go crazy, shout a big smile to the camera. 
All right, okay. So maybe we can get ready for the first set. I would like to ask everybody to turn on your camera. Okay, we have 34 participants today. We can have, can we have everybody to turn on your camera? Okay. All right, make your hair. It's a good time to make your hair now. Okay. <laughs> you can take your clothes. Long. <laughs> Okay. We have some uh, guest appearance from Dr. Melissa, <laughs> daughters with us, us today. All right, okay. So if everybody everybody ready, I think I, I need to remove this yes. mask. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh. I can do it later. <laughs> All right, okay. So the first set, uh, a former, okay? A yep. former set. Okay, maybe everybody can smile to the camera. At the count of three. One, two, three, smile. Okay. Okay. okay yeah. Another one. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. All right, so the second set. Okay, the second set is a freestyle. Okay, maybe you can give us some lovely gesture. Some small heart, big heart, or thumbs up, double thumbs up, even. Okay. Okay, I give them double thumbs up. All right, okay. So now to the camera. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. All right, for the last set. All right, for the last set, let's have, let's go crazy. Shout, smile, or anything. I would like to shout. Things like that. Okay? So maybe we can put something similar. Okay? I will shout thin, yeah? Ready? On count of three. Things. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Good job, everyone. Good job. All right. Okay. So, it's, so this concludes our meeting three. I have a good time this evening. Thank you all for the for attending. We hope you have learned and enjoyed this meeting. We will see you again in the next session. Hopefully, we can see uh, Astria again next time in session two. But from us today, that's all from us. I think we can end it with bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Thank you, everyone. So thank you, thank you so much, uh, Ibu Desi. I, I saw you just now. <laughs> you are able to join with. <laughs> you are able to join us. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ibu Desi. Thank Party, you, yep. Doctor Ifan. Thank you so much. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let me end this session. Yeah, sure. uh, maybe maybe we can have some discussion. Uh, but Ifan, uh, yeah. all the best <laughs> for the next three meetings. Thank you. Very much. Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Sure. I, I know uh, we can just copy it because it was excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope uh, it's dedicated. We, we should do something like this. <laughs> sure. I, I think it's fun. And I, I think, yeah, for the next uh, three meetings, I will enjoy as a reviewer. I just, I just, I just want to say, uh, yeah. <laughs> I just want can to say good luck to the uh, groups. <laughs> and I think, uh, I guess uh, it, it's our turn to, to be more active in the, in the group. Yeah. So we'll still hey. use the WhatsApp group for, for the presenters. Indeed, indeed. And I want to introduce, uh, we have here, yeah. uh, Mas Ade, yeah, new staff, yeah. Hello, Mas. So he, he will be uh, Hi. Hi. Us. 
He just That's joined, right. uh, I think, two weeks, two weeks ago. <laughs> right. He's in the office. Yeah, pa. Uh, just now, just now, we we get to know each other. We have some, we send some nice speaking as well, right? <laughs> just now, I, I was, okay, 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 yeah, okay. Pa Adi was able to help me to capture pa pa why you as well. <laughs> <laughs> right so yeah happy good to know good to know you have more uh addition and i think i'm sure that Paadi will be a great addition to your group unfortunately over here my my friends over here uh but kairi he will be leaving us <laughs> he'll be leaving us so we have you know uh set time but it's okay we shall see what we can do in the future uh oh, so man. yeah Kairi. once again uh congratulations to team ITS as well. Without your help, it will be impossible for us to finish the first three meetings. So thank you so much. Please accept our <laughs> appreciations. And uh, we look forward for the next three meetings. Uh, so there are a few more things that we have to look into. Um, are we going to change the virtual background? Uh, traditionally, we, we do change the background a little bit, but if we want to use the same one, I think it's okay. If I may say that, I'll yeah. really use the same virtual background. Yeah. Right. Sure. Uh, and then the, uh, the, I'm not sure if the certificates draft are already ready. Let me just check with my staff as well, because I have to make sure that both parties agree with that. Uh, lastly, I think... Uh, how about the rubrics, yeah, Ibu? Uh, Ibu Desi will be using the same rubrics, yeah? Yes, sir. I will use the same rubric also. Right. And I will modify it with, uh, to, uh, to replace with the new reviewer. Ah, sure, sure, yeah. no problem. Uh, so I, I will start calculating okay. the marks for... So, uh, uh, I'm thinking about uh, maybe we can, in, in the meeting seven later, maybe we can have one winners from group one, two, three, and another winners from group one, uh, four, five, six. It will be fair because they are in different series, right? What do you think? So we have two, yeah, so we have two best presenter, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one yeah. in meeting four, five, six. Yeah, five, five, okay. Yeah, I agree. How uh, about the price, uh, Dr. Okay. Uh, let me think about that. We haven't <laughs> have any price yet. Yeah, yeah, because uh, we, we don't uh, prepare any, uh, any gift for yeah. the best presenters. Yeah, I was thinking, uh, let me discuss, let me discuss with my director as well. Uh, I'm not sure if we can provide some merchandise. I think we can if we want, but it will be a little bit weird. Uh, but let me just check uh, what, what are the things that we have. Uh, unfortunately, we, we haven't, we are not too sure yet what uh, other programs that we will be organizing next year uh, because we haven't planned for it yet, honestly speaking. Uh, if we know already, like ITS, you have contact, then you can offer it as part of the prizes, right? But I'm not too sure. Maybe just, just let me talk to my director and see how it goes. Is it okay? Uh, how about uh, ITS? Do you have any ideas? Um, maybe I will do the same. I will talk to Dr. Maria first. All right, all right. Yeah. If, uh, I think maybe you can do something like uh, uh, merchandise or souvenirs. Uh, if we want to go for price money, uh, let me, I have to think. Uh, I apply, and I think it will be difficult because it's towards the end of the year. So they have already closed their account. So it will be a little bit difficult. But souvenir-wise, I think it could still be possible. Otherwise, we'll go down to the bare minimum where we are going to give, <laughs> sorry to say, <laughs> just a, a, a very meaningful, even though it's not costly, but very meaningful certificates. I think that's all. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll go down to that if uh, the worst case scenario, right? But at least they will get some recognition from their efforts, right? Yeah, I, I agree. So <laughs> I, I it's still valuable for, for students. Um, yeah, definitely. yes. Uh, at least they, they 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 can use these certificates as as evidence of of some extracurricular activity, which is a requirement at ITS, and they have to collect some. Mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so that is confirmed. That surely we can do it. Certificates, and we just want to see if we have any additional prizes for them. Uh, another suggestion is that yeah, Doctor Ifana Ibu uh, Desi and Pa Ali yeah. So just to check with you, uh, just now we already agreed that we want to have one winner from meeting one to three, another winner from meeting four, five, six. So do you think that we should get, uh, we should have 
the best of the best <laughs> kind of awards or it's, it's just okay we have two winners uh can can anyone remind us uh how was it last year so last year in the uh, grand closing was there a single winner like the grand grand winner i, I think not? last year we have 12 different groups uh, mm -hmm. but we only have one winner because last year we have three students from unimap plus three students from ITS from the same uh, for the same group i think so uh, based on all the evaluation for across the board all the 12 groups we only have one winner uh, but this year around because we all agree that the topics they are discussing is actually quite different uh, sdg 11 sdg 12 so it would be unfair for us to judge them based on the same uh, you know the same guidelines and what's not despite we are using the same i think we are using the same rubrics uh, but the topics itself is a little bit different so with that said i think yeah it is yeah. probably difficult for us to yeah I think Probably. it makes sense to have two winners, yeah. Yeah, yeah. These, these are two separate SDGs, yeah. Yeah. So if that's the case, then that's the remain uh, two best groups, uh, one from SDG 11, one from SDG 12. So we will have no uh, best of the best then. Okay, uh, so I think this is a little bit too, uh, still too early, but maybe we should find a time to discuss about meeting seven uh, because we want to see who to invite. Uh, I mean, if we want to invite our you know, vice chancellor or rector, if they want to give some speech, and how do we give the uh, the certificates or any reports and things like that? It, it will be a short one hour ceremony, but still we have to plan for that as well. Um, so perhaps everyone is tired today, so let's just call it a day for now. Uh, let's keep in touch in the WhatsApp group and we shall arrange for another meeting uh, to discuss on the meeting seven. Yeah, by Ivan, Ibu Desi, by Adi. Okay. Agree. Right. <laughs> All right. So it's six twenty one okay. now. This is the second time that we had uh early. We finished our program early, which I'm so uh, which I'm so happy. <laughs> so we can go back earlier. <laughs> but thank you so much once again, uh, everyone from ITS. Uh, you have my uh utmost sincere appreciation once again. So all the best for the next three meetings. Uh, anything you need our help, please do let us know. All right. Okay. Yeah, we wish us luck. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the session already. Bye bye. Okay, thank you. Bye bye.